Awesome. Hey everybody. All right, thanks for tuning in. Our last video that we made, <laughs> we uh, forgot to plug in the audio cord or something like that. The last video is basically just me, my mouth moving, but no words actually coming through the speakers. So yeah, we're gonna redo part of the video, but it's actually using a different painting, of course. So today I'm gonna relayer or add another layer onto this piece. And uh, also, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. All right. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm going to be relayering this painting. I'm also gonna be revealing some of the products that I use. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions on the channel recently about what types of resin I use, what type of pigment, what type of paint. So down below in the description of the video, you're gonna find links for all the different products that I use. Okay, so go check all those out if you're interested in trying your hands at uh, the same composition. Go and experiment. Go and play around with some of this product and see what you get. You don't have to do exactly what I do, uh, but uh, yeah, just play around with it. Experiment, see what you come up with, try new things. And uh, that's kind of what got me to where I am today is just keep evolving, keep trying new things. Trial and error is your best friend, okay? Also, I have an announcement. My new book, The Entrepreneur's Blueprint, is out and available now. Down below, you're gonna see a link for The Entrepreneur's Blueprint in the description. And if you click on that link, it's gonna take you to the store where you can buy your ebook, buy your copy of the ebook. In this book, you're gonna learn the business of art, not just the art of art. I remember when I was coming up and when I was uh, really just getting started I struggled to find content on strategy for building an art business other than, you know, typical generic stuff that you would find anywhere. So I just decided to write a book and it's packed full of all the lessons that I've learned over 16 years, as well as a lot of the coaching and mentors that I've had. Uh, a lot of their guidance is also packed into that book. So check it out, get your copy, hope it helps. Raw pigments are some of my favorite things to implement into resin. There's a company called Black Diamond. They make great pigments. They make all kinds of different stuff. Iridescence, metallics. Try not to breathe that stuff in. It's bad for you. But um, yeah, there's a link down in the description below. Go check that out. The last product that I'm actually going to talk about today, you can use all different types of paints, okay? Go and try all of it for that matter. But uh, golden acrylics, specifically the heavy body acrylics, I really love. A little bit goes a long way. You can just take little dabs and stir it into your resin. Just You got to make sure you mix it up really well or you'll have like lumps. But this, uh, this stuff is really high quality and they just make really great paints. So also link down below. You know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this painting yet. I really like this piece, but at the same time, I don't like certain aspects of it. And like, I'll tell you, I really wanna save this part. This part is my favorite. I actually really like this part too. So that second half over there, not crazy about it. So I'm gonna try to not cover up the part that I like. Try. Yeah, one of my favorite products, one of my favorite paints to use in resin I like to mix in acrylic paints in general, but one of my favorite brands is Golden. Golden makes a lot of different types of paint. The ones that I like to use with resin the most are the heavy body acrylics, Golden heavy body acrylics. A little bit goes a long way. They sell these kits too with a bunch of different colors, but uh, try it out. Just buy a little bit, see if you like it. But I would suggest just trying all of it. Get your hands on a little bit of everything and experiment and see what you come up with. But if you are gonna use this, just take a dab. Just like, just like a little dab, nothing crazy. And then mix it in. You definitely wanna mix it pretty good because you don't want it to be lumpy. You don't wanna have like a bunch of spots. But as you can see, that little bit of paint went a long way. So uh, yeah, down in the description below, we have linked this product, so go check it out. 
and we're going to continue to link other products that we use as well give us your feedback let me know what you actually like about this stuff and what you don't like about it and if you've got any other products that you want me to review in the future uh, or you think that i would like to implement in my work send them my way i love trying new things so if you got any suggestions send them over as most of you know one of my favorite things to add in resin are raw pigments raw like iridescent or mica based or metallic based pigments um, one of my favorite companies to use recently has been black diamond pigments again i use a lot of different types and brands of resin but black diamond is my favorite at the moment they have a pretty good variety i really like how they have different grain sizes and what i mean by that these are basically the same color they're like a pearlescent pigment this one has a finer grit to it versus this one has way thicker of a grit and they just show up in the resin way differently anyway, again link down below go check it out go try it and uh tell me what you like about it and what you don't like about it anyway again a little bit goes a long way you just put a little bit in the resin mix it up really good and do your thing yeah so i get a lot of questions about how i got into art and how i got into selling art and blah 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 so i'll give you a little bit about my backstory i've always liked to create whether it be painting or playing music or legos or whatever it is right i think legos are probably my earliest creative outlet one of them i used to play with a lot of legos when i was a kid but when i was about six years old i started playing a lot of guitar and i really loved it i always played by ear and i just uh i just really enjoyed it and when i was 21 i started playing with paint i painted in like middle school or in those art classes like elementary school and stuff but uh, didn't ever really pick up a paintbrush or any other type of mediums until I was 21. And I just started playing around with different stuff. There's a local artist here named Justin Gaffrey. He paints these really thick sunflower paintings. And when you see it, it looks like cake icing. You just want to reach out and touch it. So when I saw his work, I was like, whoa, what is that? You know? I've never seen this before and I really just wanted to try it so I bought some gel medium the product that he uses for his work and uh, I started experimenting with that and playing around with it and I just really loved the process I got lost in it it was so therapeutic and I don't know I just the release that I got from just painting and playing around was very similar to what I got from playing guitar. One thing about playing guitar though, like I've always been less of a performer when it comes to playing music. If people are around and watching me while I'm playing, I just screw it up. I screw up all the time. I don't know if it's like a stage fright thing or whatever, but um, when it comes to painting, you know, you can paint in private and then still share the end result with people. So it's just a different thing. But that's not why I did it, you know? Like, I, I did it because I loved it, and I really loved the process. And so I kinda got deeper into it. I started playing with other mediums after the gel medium. I was like, okay, well this is fun. What else can I get into? And uh, started experimenting with resins and a lot of watercolor and a lot of other things. And uh, over the years, I built up a pretty good inventory, it's just for me, but I was already getting into painting some larger pieces that I had in my house. And uh, I remember like I would look around at the walls in my house and see my art and I was like, man, I painted that. Like it gave me inspiration to keep creating. And uh, so anyway, fast forward about two years into after I started painting, one of my friends calls me, his name's Dylan. Dylan gives me a call and he's like, hey man, what are you doing? I was like, well, not too much. What are you doing? He was like, well, we're in Baytown. And I was like, who's we? And it was him and his girlfriend. 
And uh, I think it was his business partner or his boss at the time and, uh, and, and that guy's wife. Anyway, and he was like, hey, can we come over and have a bottle of wine? And I was kind of like, why is he asking to come over and bring these other people? But I was like, uh, sure, you'll come on over. And before we got off the phone, he kind of like whispered into the phone. He was like, hey, uh, this guy I'm bringing over, he really likes artwork. And I didn't think much of it. I was like, okay, well, y'all come on. And so they come over and we're having a bottle of wine and just chit-chatting. They were over for about an hour or two. And it's starting to get a little bit later. And right before they leave, they're like, okay, we want this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They named five pieces. And these were my like biggest works. I was like really proud of these works. Never really thought about selling them. And I just thought he was messing with me. And uh, I was like, all right, y'all have a good night. And drive safe. And he was like, we want to buy them. What's your price? And I was like, I still kind of thought he was messing around with me. And uh, so I was like, okay. Um, anyway, he said, name the price and I'll write the check. So I gave him a price. He said, deal. Sends his wife out of the car to get the checkbook and writes me a check. And at the time, that amount of money, that was more money than I had ever had in my lifetime at that point. It was more money than I'd ever made in one setting and ever had at that time. It was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was about $5,500. And I was so ecstatic about it. I was so excited. And uh, I was also sad to see those pieces go though, the next day. But here's the big shift, what happened then. When that money hit my hands, I had this shift in thinking of, oh, I can make money with this. I can make a living with this. And I'll tell you, all that did was set me back. It screwed up my process so bad because then when I stepped into the studio to paint, all I was thinking about was money. All I was thinking about is what people wanted to buy. And it screwed the whole thing up. Everything I painted in the following year was total crap. Nobody liked it. I didn't like it either, and it was a waste of time. It was a waste of money. It wasn't a total waste because it was a learning experience over time, but in the moment, it felt like a total waste. So anyway, like I said, none of it sold, so it was pointless in the moment. And uh, so yeah, I got frustrated with it, and I ended up bringing it back to its roots and just painting what I wanted to paint because I wanted to paint. You know, painting for me again. And when I did that, the work started selling again. And I started going to art festivals and things like this. And it just, uh, it wasn't like all of a sudden I'm just selling my art left and right. It wasn't like that. But uh, I was definitely making sales from time to time, but I, I was going to a lot of art festivals. Have you ever done an art festival? It's a lot of work, a lot of work. Not only do you have all your setup and booth display and blah, 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 blah. You've also got to work your booth. You've got to deal with prospecting and talking to people and standing out in the sun. I don't know about you, but I'm a redhead. I can't handle being out in the sun for days at a time, a whole weekend. So some of those first art festivals, I remember I was so sunburnt. I was like, screw this. This is terrible. And, uh, I remember the first festival I was at, it was on my birthday weekend, which is in late October. I was really excited because it was my birthday and I was out there. And I remember I brought like all of my paintings, every single creation that I had made, I brought it all. This little booth that I had was crammed full of art. I mean, like your eye, when you looked at this thing, you couldn't focus on anything. So in my eyes, I was like, I'm gonna bring all the variety. Surely somebody will find something that they like when they look at my booth. But now I know that that's a huge mistake because if you have too many options, nobody can focus on anything. And yeah, it actually works against you. So that was one lesson I learned at that event. But another really interesting lesson that I learned at that festival was from the lady next to me. 
and I forget her name, but it was like the first day of the festival. She's obviously done this before. She's got her professional booth set up, all the stuff. And anyway, the first day we're getting a lot of traffic, but nobody's really selling any art for the most part. It's just like a lot of people just shopping around, just like having fun, I guess, looking around. And the lady, we're talking and she says, you know what, I, kn I know what's going on here. And she wasn't from the area. She's somebody who, who goes to all these festivals around the country. So she's like, these people want to spend more money than what's available here. Here's what she did. She raised her prices, all of her pieces by a thousand dollars. And later that, it was almost immediate. She made a sale almost immediately after she did that. And then the following day, she kept her prices high again and she sold art the entire day. And I was like, what the hell is this? Like, why, why does that make a difference in, in these people like buying? Why would they spend money if you mark your prices up? That doesn't make any sense to me. At the time it didn't. Now I know that people that buy luxury items, which original art is a luxury item, they want to brag about what they spent. They want to feel a sense of pride that they have this expensive, nice piece of art. It's no different from somebody buying like a Gucci purse. So anyway, uh, yeah, that was uh, an interesting first experience with festivals. And after that festival, I felt deflated. I was like, I like was sure that I was gonna sell some art. It was my birthday weekend. I was like really pumped up about it. And then nothing sold. And I was like feeling like really deflated and still sunburnt. Anyway, uh, but at the same time, I also felt motivated by the fact that, okay, other people were selling art at that event. And when I looked at their art, I was like, this isn't anything that I can't do. You know, I saw some of the stuff that was selling. I was like, I can do that. So anyway, it was motivating in a way. And at the end of the day, I just really love creating. And that's what kept me in it past the threshold that I needed to go past to, uh, to create a full-time career out of selling art. But, and also, at these festivals, they're great for exposure, obviously. And not only are you gonna be meeting customers, potential prospects, but potential vendors and designers. Designers are probably the biggest one, you know? Like, I met so many people at these events that I went to that I would later do business with. So, you know. As long as you're building your network, building your database of prospects and collaborators and all the stuff, you know, it's not a loss. But you gotta make the most out of those things. You're gonna learn a lot about sales, a lot about play, communication. Probably gonna suck at it at first if you've never done anything like that before. And you should expect to suck at it. You shouldn't expect to just go out there and kill it the first time you do it. That would be unreasonable. And uh, don't get down about that either. Just go do it and learn. As long as you don't quit, you're never gonna fail. And what I mean by that is like, here's your two options. You either win or you grow or learn, whichever way you wanna word it, okay? So you either win or you grow. The only fail is if you quit. So that's what I would, tell somebody who's starting out, don't fall over, Mikey. You all right? So like, I don't know if you, uh, if you checked out our last video, but our last video that we released was about offering commission work or custom pieces of art. But one thing about art festivals is you gotta talk to prospects. Like if, if somebody is in the market for art and they come into the show and they're scanning, they're looking for something. They might even be looking for something specific, like a specific size or color scheme. So, you know, if, if they really love your work and you can tell that they're interested, talk to them. Like, see, see if you can get them talking about themselves. Uh, because if they will 
let you know that they have a project or a space that they're looking for. If you get to that point in the conversation, you have a chance to upsell them on custom work. Say they really love your work, but you don't have anything at the show that's perfect for their wall space. If you don't let them know that you do custom work, there's no way that they're gonna know that you offer custom work. And when you do offer custom work, you're gonna convert a lot more sales.